Harmonious Bleaker. I think his name is pronounced Harmonious Bleaker, and he's a very interesting character. Now, one of these people who's just on the verge of being a founder, he really doesn't come uh, into the greater public uh, world until after the revolution. Um, in his 30s, he becomes a member of the House of Representatives just about the time James Madison is becoming president, to put some perspective on him. Now, he was from a fairly wealthy family uh, in Albany, New York, and he ends up uh, only being congressman for one term. I should note that he is a, he's very well known as a civic leader in Albany, New York, at the, in le, a, while they're exiting the American founding, uh, leading into the second generation of American leaders. But during this time, uh, he works, first of all, he has a law firm where he partners with Theodore Sedgwick Jr. Uh, we've talked about the Theodore Sedgwick Senior, Senior a lot. He is the one who worked with Elizabeth Freeman uh, to verify that the Massachusetts first constitution outlawed slavery. He would also be a, a representative and, and work in the United States government. So his son, Theodore Sedgwick Jr., was law partners with Harmonious Bleeker, which I thought was an interesting tie-in. Uh, the Harmonious Bleeker also goes on to, there's a whole slew of students of his that learn the law under him that go on to be extraordinary businessmen. People who in the mid-1800s end up being important to railroads, being important members of Congress, members of the Senate, uh, so as an educator, he's very important, and as a leader, he's very important. So while his name might not be well known today, uh, not only did he educate these people, he helped sit on the board of the Erie, the Erie Canal. He was on that board for a while when it was being finalized. Uh, State of New University of the State of New York board, Albany City Hospital and Mechanics, and Farmers Bank. Uh, so just really organizing the city of Albany, which nowadays is the capital of New York, isn't a big city now, but at the time was a very important city, especially because it was the center of Dutch heritage in America. Uh, and as we said last week, not uh, Pennsylvania Dutch, <laughs> which is German, but uh, actual Dutch. Uh, and New York then, and even to this day, has quite a, a heritage of Dutch history. And that becomes important because Harmonist Bleeker spoke Dutch. And eventually, he decides to retire uh, in the late 18, uh, in the early 1830s. He decides to essentially retire and go on an extended trip to Europe. And he goes to Europe and he does some Europing. And then while he's there, uh, Martin Van Buren becomes president and he sends a letter. Van Buren, who, by the way, also of Dutch heritage, the only president whose native language was not English, was Dutch, though he was born in the United States. And Martin Van Buren is also the first president to be born after independence. So that's a lot of Ma Martin Van Buren for you. So he sends it to his Dutch buddy who's over in Europe, Harmon is bleaker, and he says, yo, Harmy, can you please be the secretary to the Netherlands? And he does. He goes to the Netherlands, and he already speaks the Dutch, because again, the Netherlands is where Dutch comes from. I know, I don't, I don't know. So he speaks Dutch. He works very well with the people in the Netherlands because they obviously also speak Dutch. Uh, and he's there for about a year and a half. Now, while he's there, he meets a woman and they get married. A nice Dutch gal. And they get married and she speaks Dutch. But what's interesting about her is she was 28 years old and he was 63. No, I'm not here to judge people. If you love someone, you love someone. But you know what? That is quite an age gap. That is 35 years in age difference. So they get married, and they end up coming back to Albany. And they're in Albany for a few years, three or four years, and then he passes away of natural causes, closing in on 70 years old. She's in her mid-30s, and she ends up going back to the Netherlands. She does marry again, comes back to Albany, goes back. But the point is, he left her his fortune. He had amassed a fortune over his lifetime, and he leaves it to her on the condition that after she dies, the money be donated, since they had he had no children, the money be donated to the city of Albany. And it is donated to Albany, and it is given to an organization that leads to the creation of the Albany Public Library. Now, there was one building it was in that was a theater and a library in the early 1900s, I understand. Uh, it ended up, they built another building, and currently, the foundation of the Albany Public Library is because of the donations, the generous donations of Harmonious Bleeker. And in fact, the Albany Public Library is in a building whose name is the Harmonious Bleeker Library. So if you're from Albany, you probably found that real interesting. If you're not from Albany, you might not. 